Animals were the only form of portable power in the medieval period. We know all about horses and that kind of thing. There's another kind of creature which is less familiar to us in the West these days. What is it and what can it do? Let's find out. The animal I'm talking about is a mule. Now, for those of you that don't know, a mule is a sterile hybrid of a donkey and a horse. That means the mum has to be a horse and the dad was a donkey. There is another type of hybrid, which is a horse dad and a donkey mum. That's called a hinny, but they were typically not very much used. We don't hear about them. There's a possibility they're a more frail kind of creature, not necessarily having the best of both as mules are supposed to have. Mules are ever present in the medieval landscape. One of the perhaps slightly troubling things about them is they're not often talked about. So functional were they and so in the background that really an awful lot of commentators of the medieval period just didn't even talk about them. Now, mules, along with oxen, were used as relatively low status beasts of burden. They were ridden sometimes, but mostly they were used to pack goods. So pack animals or a mule train or the equivalent, which of course became very familiar to the settlers in North America at a later period. But in the medieval times, mule trains were used for carrying bulk goods from one place to the other when boats weren't available. Boats were obviously the cheapest form of transportation, but had to be linked by rivers. So mules were used for cross-country travel. Now the interesting thing about mules is that it's of course a genetic dead end. Once you've got a mule, you can't breed with it. So they were actually, in some places, more valuable than horses. But of course you have to remember that horses were not as big as they are today. Uh, and mules could actually have what's called hybrid vigor, which means they're actually stronger than both of their parents. Supposedly, they had the attributes of a horse and the attributes of a donkey, so they were very sure-footed, they could carry weight for weight more than an equivalent size horse, um, and they're supposed to be very steady and calm. Now, of course, these generalizations are always a little bit rough and ready because I work with horses and I know every horse I work with has a different personality. I'm pretty sure every mule would have had a different personality, but in general terms, they were considered to be beasts of burden. Mule breeding itself was quite a lucrative pastime, it appears. From the records, it looks like a good mule was more expensive than an average horse. So you could argue they were just as valuable as horses, but interestingly, they're supposed to eat a lot less, which is good, and they can live on rough forage, where a horse would need more expensive grain or more expensive grass to survive. A mule can live on slightly more rough forage and possibly could forage on its actual route. So if you were going to be transporting goods, you could transport them for the waking hours of daylight. You then corral your mules, you let them eat whatever's there and they'd get enough sustenance to keep going. It does appear in antiquity that mules were treated with quite a lot of disdain. And that's very sad. They seem to have been treated more cruelly than horses, which is quite awful, but that's just the way it seems it was. These days, there are mules used in logging and there are mules used in some parts of the world, but there are many more horses used, very few oxen, um, and mules quite hard to get hold of. One of the things that I'm always interested in doing though is testing stuff out. Now, sometimes the stories about mules have the ring of apocryphal tales passed down from one writer to another without them actually having any direct experience of them. So in typical modern history TV style, I have decided to buy a mule. I've shipped in a mule all the way from Spain where there are more mules than uh, there are in the UK. And I am going to try riding him for the first time. And I'm going to see whether I can train him for carrying weapons because we do know that clergy quite often rode mules and it is possible that Bishop Odo, the brother of William the Conqueror, 
in 1066 may have ridden a mule at the Battle of Hastings. It's not sure, but there's a possibility. It appears that mules were slightly synonymous with humility. Jesus rode donkey through the gates of Jerusalem in the Bible, and so it's possible that donkeys and mules have a, a religious significance for uh, the early Christian church. So let's see whether it's possible. Let's experiment and see whether I can ride a mule to war. Good boy. This is the mule with no name. I've uh, just imported him from Spain. So he's still a little new to this country and uh, he's completely unfamiliar to me. A mule was a very important type of steed, if you like, in the medieval period. Good boy, eh? Good boy. But we don't actually, in the West anyway, in particular in Europe, there are not many riding mules around. We see incredibly high status people riding mules in some of the resource material that we've got. Um, and the mules are covered in gilded bridles and gold tack. So they were not necessarily low status creatures. Uh, come on then, walk on. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Eh? What's this? So they were definitely not low status creatures. Um, the reason I bought him, and I've got to think of a good name for him, is that I wanted to experiment with riding an animal that was not a horse. Uh, obviously I've spent all my life riding ponies and then horses, and horses are very familiar to me, and they have lots of challenges and everyone is an, an individual. I've never actually ridden a mule before, certainly never trained a mule before, and I thought it was interesting to try. One of the things I've noticed straight away is that I've probably got the bit wrong. He seems to like this bit, um, and this is a training bit. This is the sort of bit I would put on a young horse. It has little keys inside it which tickle the tongue and make the creature mouth the, the bit. So this is an attempt to get him to accept the bit more. Um, and obviously the head geometry is quite different. This bridle was originally set up for a horse and went on him fairly easily, but the width across here that is typical of a donkey or a mule um, is quite different. And you could liken, steady now, good boy. You could liken this to uh, deep brow ridges of a Neanderthal compared to the smaller brow ridges of, uh, of uh, Homo sapiens. So it's interesting. And um, obviously huge ears, huge expressive ears and a different personality. I've, I've noticed that in just in handling, he's, he's a little bit more like handling a wild animal instead of a domesticated animal, which is interesting. He's quite well trained. He's trained to be ridden, although uh, he isn't particularly well trained. Uh, and a lot of mules just don't get that kind of high level training, that high level schooling. So I'm gonna get on him today. I've uh, got one of my old war saddles. This saddle is a converted Spanish saddle. It's basically, it's not a medieval saddle, but it is quite a narrow Spanish saddle and it's been converted with these nice bits of steel on the front and the back to look a bit more like a medieval saddle, but it's not built like one. Um, it is quite narrow though, because what I've found is a mule's back is quite straight. A horse's back is more uh, dipped in and therefore the saddle sits on it differently. A mule's back is actually quite straight. So I've had to work quite hard with the different types of, the different types of padding and the different types of uh, under blanket there. And also he's completely untrained for filming. So this is gonna be interesting for me to train him and also to train him for filming. So I've got high hopes and I'm quite excited about trying this out. Got a helmet on though, because you never know. This is a medieval helmet, so that's good training for me. But also it's a safety helmet. It's very well padded. So if I fall off or hurt myself, this should protect me. Quite often on horses, I don't wear a safety helmet. On him, I'm going to some of the time until I get more confidence with him. Right, I suppose I shall check the tack 
and then get on him. Good boy. Come on then. Let's see whether we can use the mounting block, eh? Because that would be nice. Good boy. Walk on. Walk on. Good boy. Walk on. Good boy. Right. Good boy. Good lad. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Good boy. Right. Well, <laughs> good boy. Whoa, 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 whoa. I have to work on how to keep his nose down. He's, uh, he likes having his mouth open. That could be to do with the bit. Um, so I'll try different bits. And uh, the first thing I feel I notice most of all is that there isn't much of an animal in front of me here compared to a horse. With a horse, you would have a lot more uh, shoulders, shoulder girdle, especially with the stallion, uh, neck, uh, and the head would be less obvious. So it's rather sweet. I'm, um, good boy, trying to be super gentle. He's actually very gently mouthed. But uh, he has the most enormous ears. He has a very thin neck and he has enormous ears. It's rather sweet because it's rather amazing for anybody that's never ridden a mule. He's actually quite sensitive to, that's interesting, he neck reins as well. He's very sensitive to movements. Um, he's also interested in what's going on in the world, but he's no, he doesn't know leg yielding at all. Uh, good boy. But he is listening to me. And I feel I ought to sit a little bit further back on him than on a horse. Uh, I've seen pictures of people riding mules and donkeys much further back. And that probably seems to make sense. So I might need to get a specifically built saddle for him at some stage, but this one seems to be okay. I feel quite comfortable on him. And it kind of makes me smile because there's something wonderful about a new area of endeavor. There's something really exciting about riding a different creature than a horse. Um, and there aren't many creatures big enough for us to ride. And so a mule is a, uh, is on the way to riding a wild animal in some ways. Uh, it's obviously half horse, so it's not, <laughs> not fully a wild animal in any way, shape or form, and he's behaving incredibly well. Uh, he does open his mouth a lot and stand. Ooh, 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 ooh. Good boy. He's done very well. I'm going to pick up a sword now and try swinging a sword around. That's because I feel quite confident on him and I have a suspicion he'll be okay, but I will take it very, very gently as always and uh, see how he is. So let me go and get a sword. Come on then, let's try and get a plastic sword. I think a metal one is too much at this stage or a wooden sword. Good boy, good boy. Up, oh. up, oh. good boy. Good boy. He's definitely noticed, you can see by his ears, he's noticed what I've picked up, but he's been very good. Good boy. And I will make sure and I hold this that I can throw it away from me at any time. If you're holding on to something and a horse is panicking, the best thing to do is get rid of it. And then the horse might, uh, or in this case, mule, might calm down. Come on then. Come on then, good boy. So just swinging it, actually, he's going incredibly well. With a young horse, I probably wouldn't do this this much, but he seems to be taking everything in his stride. I have heard that mules are quite, uh, well, stubborn, hard to train. So far, I would say 
that that's absolutely not the case. I would say that he's very, maybe he's a one in a million, but I would say that he's very good. He's picked up neck reining very quickly, unless he already knew it. I don't know whether he does know it. Um, and he seems to be okay with swinging a sword. Yeah, there's a little bit of tension. When I hit something, he's tensing up, um, wondering what it is, but that's hardly surprising. Wow. <laughs> he's learned very well already. Good boy. Come on then. I am only going at a walk, of course. Uh, come on, you. And his bit. Come on, come on. Good boy. The way he holds the bit in his mouth, we need to work on. I don't like tying my horse's mouths or mule's mouths uh, together. I like them to accept the bit naturally. Oh, there's a bird. Good boy. We'll go, we'll stay down this end. I like them to accept the bit naturally. He is beginning to do that. I say beginning to, but this is incredibly quick. Wow. He doesn't really know me either, so he has no reason to trust me particularly. But, whoa, whoa, whoa. I would say he seems quite okay with a sword. Good boy. Come on then, come on then, come on. So in summary, I would say, Mule's fantastic. He absolutely does feel like he could be used as a war platform or a fighting platform, but he also seems to be listening to me incredibly well. And with those big ears, it's very easy to see where his attention is. I think we have to work a little bit on how he carries the bits in his mouth and what I do with it. Um, we'll have to see, we'll have to see what suits him. Uh, and obviously I haven't done anything at speed, but it has been just exciting and interesting and quite different outside my own personal zone of comfort to ride a creature that isn't a horse, that is so different. Whoa, 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 come on you, come on you. And to be quite honest, I'm presenting from the back of him. He's never done that before. And we're filming as well. So there's stuff going on that would freak out quite a lot of horses that are well trained. So I would say so far, so absolutely brilliant. Got to think of a name for him though, very quickly. Good boy, come on.